the can lights are talked about specifically as recessed lighting in the air barrier, air sealing, and insulation installation table. They have to be IC rated, meaning insulation contact rated, and they have to be airtight uh, can lights. The airtight can light is actually labeled up here inside the can, uh, so you can quickly verify that. The airtight can light should also have a gasket around the perimeter so that when it penetrates the drywall, the drywall will gasket up against it. Uh, they're significantly more airtight than the non-airtight cans that used to be installed in this location between conditioned space and unconditioned space uh, above, or the ventilated attic space. Now, this juncture between, or connection between the can and the drywall needs to be sealed. In this case, uh, the gasket is doing that. But what about the case where you have fan housing uh, or other types of uh, electrical boxes or other things that are set, that are installed in that plane between the conditioned space and the ventilated attic. The reality is that those things need to be air sealed to the surface that they're penetrating as well. And that's a requirement of the code. So we have fan housing, we have duct boots, uh, we have electrical boxes. And just here you'll see an electrical box. So the drywall isn't installed yet, so when the drywall gets installed, it should be cut tight to the electrical box. And then I personally think the painter is the ideal trade partner that would come around and air seal it to that electrical box. Uh, the other thing you can see on this electrical box is that it's been foamed uh, where the electrical wire is coming into the box and even where the electrical wire isn't coming into the box on the other side. Uh, the knockout hasn't been knocked out, but they've air sealed it because it's not an airtight box, which is your other option. You have the option of using an actual airtight electrical box in that location. And then the last thing we wanted to talk about here is that the uh, air barrier, air sealing, and insulation table in the wall section says that you need to gasket the drywall to the top plate when it's adjacent to the exterior. So if I have a perfectly square house, it doesn't mean just the four exterior walls. It means that if it's adjacent to unconditioned space, the exterior of unconditioned space. So you can see that these interior walls here are all gasketed with the seal seal. Uh, and when they install the drywall, they can no longer install the drywall onto the wall and shove it up because they're just going to peel that off there. They now need to, in essence, install the drywall against the sill seal. And when they drill it in place, they're going to uh, create a seal here, an airtight seal here. Now you can do that with other materials like a acoustical caulk or some type of caulk that's flexible and remains flexible over time. Or you can do it with gaskets like sill seal or other types of gaskets here. And the, the rationale for that is that our high side holes and our low side holes are our most detrimental holes in the house because of what we call the stack effect. The stack effect happens when air warms. And as air warms, it rises and it basically seeks that hole. And there is a long hole here where the drywall is against that top plate. It might be just an eighth of an inch, it might be a, a larger hole, but if you add up the, the width of that hole by the, square, by the lineal length of that hole, you get some very large holes on the high side of your house. And this is a very important thing to do in order to meet the air leakage requirements of the code. So you'll see in this situation that you'll come across often in, in these houses that we have two assemblies actually in going on here. This is actually a roof assembly, and right over here is actually a floor assembly here. Uh, so they've insulated this uh, uh, roof assembly as an unventilated attic space here, and they've dense packed it completely full of insulation, and they've added a gasket here. Uh, this gasket is actually sill seal that works quite well when you put drywall on it and you screw it in place it's tightening that drywall up against the gasket here to create an airtight separation between the, the conditioned space of this floor system over here and the unconditioned space of this attic that's been insulated here to make this insulation work better 
yeah, so that air isn't moving through it and it, we're going to get the R value of the material that is actually installed uh, performing well. Plumbing, wiring, and other obstructions are called out specifically in the air barrier, air sealing, and insulation installation table. From an insulation perspective, remember that the insulation needs to completely enclose or surround any obstruction that is in an insulated cavity. Uh, from an air sealing perspective, we have to drill holes uh, through our top plates and connect, we're basically connecting the unconditioned ventilated attic space uh, to the conditioned space and we have to air seal those penetrations. So you can see the wiring going through the hole that's been drilled uh, is been air sealed here. Now also remember that a uh, best rule of thumb is to have one wire or one obstruction that's going through that hole, uh, through each hole. In this case, we have two wires going through this hole, and you can clearly see, see the difficulty of air sealing uh, this hole here, and that there's still a pathway for air to move from the ventilated attic to the conditioned space of the house, or vice versa when we're talking about stack effect. Shafts and penetrations are another area where it's specifically called out in the air barrier, air sealing, and insulation installation table. Uh, what we're talking about is where a flue shaft, for example, or a plumbing vent, or a radon vent, or something like that is going to an unconditioned space. Uh, so again, it's, it's a real sequencing issue here where you want to get your air barrier installed first then you want to cut a right-sized hole through the air barrier to pass whatever you have to pass through it uh, to the unconditioned side of the assembly here. So you can see that they did a really nice job here. Uh, this is a fireplace flue. Uh, they've installed OSB uh, between the house and the ventilated attic space here. And we've got our flue with a right-sized hole cut in to the air barrier passing through here and they've used fire uh, sealing caulk uh, to seal that, that completely airtight here. So again, think about it as the framer's responsibility and that it's a sequencing issue of getting your air barrier up first and then uh, passing anything through that air barrier uh, with a right size hole.